Hey guys and welcome back, my name is James and today we'll be making this little card holder which has two slots which are regular sized and one extra large slot at the back uh, for those extra large cards if you need it. Um, yes, the PDF template is downloadable completely for free off my website, uh, the link to that will be in the description below. Before we get started, if you'd like to say thank you for this template, uh, please just hit the subscribe button. That goes a long, long way in helping my channel grow and helping me provide more content for you guys. And if you have already hit the subscribe button, then a like also works a great deal. Thanks a lot, guys, and enjoy the build. Print out your PDF pattern using simple A4 paper and just make sure with the print guide that you are actually printing at the 100% scale. Go ahead and cut your templates following the outer edge, which is the seam allowance edge. The pieces you'll be left with at the end are indeed the front panel, the back panel, the front pocket, and the top pocket. And you can see I had a small tear here, so I've had to add some sellotape. For today's build, I'm going to be using some Pueblo leather, and as you can see, I managed to get a spill there. So I'm going to have to try and avoid this area but that should be totally fine. I've got loads of leather to work with and uh, yeah, hopefully this leather will turn out really nicely for this build. I like to work on the back side of my piece and the first thing you want to do is trace out your different pieces. Um, just figure out where you want to position them first, maximize the uh, use of leather uh, or at least maximize the amount of leather you'll be using on this piece to avoid waste. Let's not forget this used to be a living animal, um, so a bit of respect guys. Let's try and make sure we use it as appropriately as possible. Pueblo leather is a very unique leather that has been buffed to have this really amazing finish really and this is a finish that will uh, age quite rapidly but one thing i find works really well is adding a coat of good quality wax in this case saphir medaille d'or and i find it really seals in a lot of these pores and gives it a really gorgeous look at the end so i'm going to be adding a coat of this before we go any further if you're curious about using Pueblo leather for yourself i have made a review video of this leather which is on my channel and i will link it uh, down below and I will also add a link to that up to the top right hand side of your screens right now. Go and check it out. I really do test this leather out and test out uh, a few different things on it to see how it reacts and uh, yeah hopefully that will give you a better insight as to whether or not Pueblo leather is the leather that you need for your build. Once you are ready and happy with the look of your leather, go ahead and start cutting your pieces. Now, I like to use a rotary tool for this most of the time for those long straight lines because it just makes nice, perfectly uh, straight cuts. And uh, yeah, it's, it's the nicest tool that I have for this kind of work. Don't forget to use a metal ruler as much as possible, but uh, any straight edge would work well. If it's metal, it does mean that your knife won't be cutting it into the metal or into the... Uh, yeah, it won't be cutting into the ruler as it could on a plastic ruler. Also, don't worry too much about cutting perfect lines here because we do have a seam allowance and that will allow us to get perfect cuts later on once all my pieces are glued up and assembled. So at this stage, just try and cut as close as you can to those lines, but don't be too cautious about cutting it perfectly because it's, it's going to be cut off anyway later. This is just to give you a starting, uh, good starting base and hopefully allow you to correct any errors later on. Now at this point there are three edges you really want to take care of before moving on any further. The first one is the top edge along the back panel, then the front edge or the front pocket top edge and the top edge on the top pocket as well as the small under edges there. Um, this is because later on in the build you won't have access to them. So I'm going to go very briefly over how I do it and I'll show you fast forward on the top edge, my burnishing process, but overall it's more or less the same thing every time. So I like to use a very small Barry King Tools edge beveler here, and that will help me round out the edges. I'll then go ahead and use some very fine sand grit, uh, sandpaper, very fine grit sandpaper, sorry, if needed, if not needed, and probably for this one I might be able to get away with just using the edge beveler. Um, I don't use that step, but if needed, some very fine sand grit, sand, sorry, very fine grit sandpaper. I don't know why I can't say that tonight. Um, then go ahead and use tokenol, which is my preferred, uh, I mean, burnishing agent. And I will use a 100% cotton rag or glove in my case, because it gives me a wonderful control over my piece to burnish it. Mm -hmm. 
by placing your template on the front panel, uh, you've got here an indication of where to line up your top pocket at the bottom here. Now all I've gone ahead and done is line it up. Uh, I've traced a, three, a line three, me three millimeters away from the edge here and hit my different pricking, uh, sorry, use my pricking irons to make my stitching holes. Now I'm using 3.25 millimeter spacing crimson hides uh, Japanese style pricking, oh, is it no, French style pricking irons, which is the slants instead of the diamonds holes, um, but you can use any pricking irons you would like, or even just use, use an awl, and you don't have to have this many holes, you can have just a few. The idea is just to hold this card holder in place at the right height. For my stitching, I am going to be using my trusted Maisie thread, which is the M50 version, so 0.5mm thread in MS004, uh, which is the colour which I think will look fabulous against a Pueblo. I'll be using a very straightforward saddle stitch technique here, um, and I'll be showing it to you on camera, although very briefly. Um, for the future stitches, I'll be doing it off camera, as I just don't think watching me stitch is particularly enjoyable for anyone, especially not me. Um, but Anyhow, I'll be showing you this one. Uh, feel free to do any type of stitching that you usually do. In this case, for me, this is my tr tried and trusted saddle stitch. I do have a stitching pony that I would normally use for this kind of thing, and it's a gorgeous little tool by Dream Factory. And if you don't know those guys, go and check them out. It's really quite something. They've got some great tools available, and their stitching pony is <laughs> possibly the tool that I use most around this place uh, in my shop, and I absolutely love it, but I'm not showing it to you here some because of the camera angle. It's a bit awkward, um, but trust me, guys, it's well worth it. Go ahead and check it out. They've got different sizes available. I believe you can get them on Etsy and get them shipped anywhere in the world, so yeah, do go and check them out. They are called Dream Factory, and they have some great tools. In my case, I'm using the yeah, the, the, I think it's the middle saddle pony or the middle stitching pony, and it's a really just a great, great tool to have around the shop. Mark your leather just underneath the point where the top pocket reaches the edge here, the top edge of the top pocket. And this is because you'll want to start prepping the back piece of leather for your glue. What I'm going to do at this point is mark down a line eight millimeters away from my edge. Um, now my seam allowance is five millimeters. So this is the line that will help me know where to add my glue. The seam allowance really enables you to be able to cut your pieces of leather really nice and flush and gives you loads of space to play around with and it enables you to get the nicest looking edges possible. So by doing this I can glue my edges together without any fear of missing a spot or gluing too far forwards and it really allows me to get the best edges possible towards the end. I'm using a specialized tool here that's going to enable me to skive down some of these edges and get them ready to be glued up, but you could definitely do it with a regular skiver, um, I'm just not very good at that, or just use sandpaper to roughen up your surface and enable the glue to grab on to hold to grab hold onto something basically. Um, this you could decide if you have thicker leather to go ahead and uh, use this technique to make sure your leather is not too thick. In my case it really is just making sure that my glue has a place to grab onto. Again, don't worry too much about your edges. The whole point of the seam allowance is that you'll be able to cut this flush and make sure your edges look perfect, but this will really allow me my glue to grab hold of those fibers and work a charm. Allow the glue to dry for about five to 10 minutes, depending on the glue you're using. Check the packet, and you probably want to let it dry a bit more than you actually think is necessary. Um, you really want it to be tacky to the touch. In my case, I need to let it dry at least a good five minutes, and this will give me plenty of time to clear up my bench and make sure that everything is clean for the next few steps. Now, while your piece is drying, it's a great moment to grab the front panel template and cut off the top edge, and the reason why will become apparent in the next step. Everything is now dry, it is time to go ahead 
and place this down gently, making sure it's as straight as possible. There we go. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect, everything will line up eventually. There we go. And go ahead and place your bottom pocket here, or front pocket, up snug against this, pass, this these little ailerons, or whatever you want to call them here. There we go, that's not bad at all. Good. I'm quite happy with that. And ironically, you can already tell where the underneath pocket is uh, underneath there. And that's just to show you how fast this leather grabs whatever's underneath and uses it to create like the pattern or, or patina or whatever. It's a, a leather that really does mark very fast. It's a leather that's really tough to work with, but uh, can produce some spectacular results. So I want to keep practicing with this one and see what I can achieve. In the meantime, let's carry on with this build. Now, remember this piece? This piece is the one you just cut off the edge here, and I'll show you why. Because now, this becomes your template to cut the edge nice and flush. Perfect. Now, before actually going ahead and doing anything to this piece, I would normally like to let this dry for about an hour or so, at least, if not overnight, just to make sure that the glue is properly fixed. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to speed ahead, so hopefully this doesn't cause any issues for me throughout this build. It shouldn't cause any major issues, but I'm just letting you know that at this point, I would normally let it dry, and for the sake of the you guys watching, I'm not going to do that. Once your edge is burnished, go ahead and mark your stitch lines and stitch away. Now, as mentioned, I like to stitch my uh, edges three millimeters away from the edge. Don't worry about going too far down. Don't forget that you'll be cutting some of this down here anyway, so you really don't want to go too far down. If anything, go ahead and just check for your template how far you should be going uh, before you stop. So yeah, just about there is perfect. There you go, all stitched up, and I have to say, I'm very happy with this colour choice. Uh, no backstitch here, but that should be fine, this is where I started. Uh, one backstitch here, just to make sure that the joint here was nice and strong, and then two backstitches here, just to make sure that it was nice and clean, and wouldn't come out. So I'm just going to add a bit of uh, wax here, just to make sure that the, the thread won't move. But overall, very happy with the result. It's time to glue the two pieces together, and just like I did previously, I'm scribing a line eight millimeters away from the edge, and this will show me where I can start adding my glue. Once your glue is dry to the touch, go ahead and align the top edges, so the ones that you have burnished. Make sure that they are as flush as possible. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and press down all the corners where the glue should be making contact. Now this is Pueblo leather, so you can actually see some areas here, for example, where I've marked my leather, but that should disappear later in buffing it. So that's one of the particularities of Pueblo leather is that such things do tend to just disappear by buffing. So as you can see, just rubbing it slightly already makes a bit of a difference. So hopefully these marks won't be uh, here on a permanent basis, but don't forget that this is more due to the Pueblo leather's cactus characteristics than actually by just working the leather. So if you're using more regular leather, this probably won't happen to you. Once you're satisfied that everything's been pressed down properly, go ahead and apply your template back onto the piece of leather. And now we are going to be trimming off those excess pieces of leather all around the uh, extra seam allowance edge. We are nearing the completion of this project. All you need to do now is go ahead and stitch around the edge as Previously, I'll be doing this off camera and show you the result. There you have it, guys. This is the card holder. Now, as I mentioned, I've been using Pueblo leather, and just by rubbing it a bit, you can already see that we've got rid of a lot of those marks that had appeared throughout the build, and it's already looking much, much better. Uh, now, this is 1.2 millimeters thick Pueblo, and Pueblo is not the toughest leather, it's quite a, you know, it's quite a soft leather, so you could probably you get away with 1.4 millimeter Pueblo or 1.2 millimeter of simple veg tanned leather. Depending what you use, you might have to try things out and see what works best for you. Uh, I'm very curious to see how this one will age. 
One quick note is that you could really also, if you wanted to, add pockets on the back side. Uh, now, for my purpose, I quite like this form factor simply because I don't need that much in my pocket and I really didn't want to add extra weight or extra thickness or extra layers of leather basically to this piece. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the template, uh, PDF template is downloadable completely for free off my blog. The link is below. Go and grab it and uh, yeah, enjoy building. And as I mentioned again, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed the PDF template, please consider subscribing to this channel and leaving a like and a comment on the video. That really goes a long way to helping me grow and provide more content like this for you guys. As always, thanks a ton for being here, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something, hopefully you've enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you very soon for some more Leathercraft.